These are two of the biggest and most expensive smartphones you can buy right now. But which one wins out of the iPhone 13 Pro and the Galaxy S22 Ultra? Hello and welcome back to Marcos Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have. And if you haven't subscribed, the button is, there it is. So since October last year, I've been a happy iPhone 13 mini user. I love this tiny little phone. But when the Galaxy S22 Ultra was announced in February last month, I was immediately interested. Now don't worry, that doesn't mean I'm getting rid of this. That isn't gonna happen. I'm gonna carry on using the iPhone 13 mini, but I need to look over the garden fence occasionally and see what's going on outside of iPhone world. Now, as many people have pointed out, the S22 Ultra is basically a Galaxy Note. What's more interesting, I think, is how it compares against the biggest iPhone you can buy, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Before I get into it, a very quick shout to the lovely team at Reboxed, link in the description. They are the people who loaned me this iPhone 13 Pro Max for the purpose of this review. And Reboxed offers a smarter, safer, and more sustainable way to buy your tech. If you buy your next smartphone from these guys, you'll not only save yourself some money, quite a bit, but you'll also be helping the planet. Every device they sell goes through a 70 point diagnostic check and also comes with 12 months warranty. There are some absolute bargains to be had on their website. So to find out more, just click the link in my description. We'll start with pricing between these two. So this is the base model S22 Ultra. It has 128 gigs of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. And that sent me back 1,149 pounds in the UK. And that's more expensive actually than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is 1,049 pounds. The base model in this phone also comes with 128 gigs of storage, but six gigabytes of RAM. So the iPhone is definitely more expensive than the S22 Ultra, but Samsung do make this a little bit more tempting due to some some offers they tend to throw in. So when I bought mine, it came with a pair of free Galaxy Buds Pro, which are worth about 220 quid, and also 12 months of free subscription to Disney+. Plus. Samsung also does a very good trading program for these phones, where you can trade in your old S series phone and get up to 350 pounds off the new one. In fairness, Apple does do the same with their iPhones, but it's not quite as generous as Samsung. So even though on paper, the S22 Ultra looks more expensive than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, those little sweeteners really do help make this a more tempting buy. As I mentioned in my original S22 Ultra review, which I'll link to above, this is a stunning looking phone. And when I first saw it, I didn't think so. I thought it looked a bit kind of bug-eyed with these lenses kind of slapped on the back. And I don't know, it looked a little bit awkward in the press photography, but it's one of those things that until you get it in your hands, you don't quite appreciate just how well designed this phone is. And it's very reminiscent to the iPhone in terms of build quality, but also the materials that these two phones use. So there's lots of glass, lots of aluminium. They both have this kind of matte finish on the back. Although there have been a few photos online recently where people with the darker version of this, so the black version for instance, have been getting scratches on the rear of the device. This one, the white version, mine looks absolutely fine, but that's a bit worrying. I'll put a photo on screen now so you can see what I mean. But there's been one or two reports of this, which is a bit concerning. Uh, the iPhone, this is the blue version, no marks on it whatsoever. This does feel on the back a little bit more premium. But overall, they both feel like very, very well built, expensive phones. Now they do both have the very shiny aluminium edges, which after, I mean, they look lovely when you get them out of the box, don't get me wrong, but after about two seconds of use, they're just covered in fingerprints and smudges. But if you polish both of these phones up, they look stunning. So design-wise, it's a home run for both. Now, when it comes to performance between these two phones, if you don't know me by now, I don't do benchmarks at all. I'd rather connect my teeth to the mains than sit there for hours doing benchmarks, but there are some people out there who are much smarter and more patient than me that do that sort of thing. So if you wanna know how these two phones perform against each other, just go and double check their videos. But what I can tell you and what you might expect is that the iPhone 13 Pro Max is a very quick phone. That's because it's an iPhone. iPhones are fast, they always have been, they always will be, and they stay fast for long periods of time. You know, you could run this phone for two, three, probably four years, years and it might get a little bit slow towards the end but generally speaking my experience with iPhones is that they last an awfully long time. It's a little bit different when it comes to the S22 Ultra and that's because depending on where you live Samsung will give you a different chip inside it. So if like me you live in the UK or Europe you get their own Exynos chip. Whereas if you live, I think, in the US and certain other places in Asia and what have you, you get the Snapdragon chip, which is much better, apparently, than the Exynos. Now, in day-to-day -day performance, bearing in mind I'm not a power user, I use my smartphones 
as smartphones really. I you know, text on them, I browse the internet, I do a bit of email, I don't play games on them, I don't push them to their limits really. And because of that, this still feels like a nice snappy quick phone. Admittedly, it's not quite as snappy as the iPhone 13 Pro Max. There's a little bit of juddering when you go into certain apps and come out and scrolling big web pages, occasionally it stutters a little bit. So there's, there's definitely a bit of a performance deficit there, but it's not enough to ruin the experience. But there's no escaping the fact that if you are really interested in that sort of thing, if you want the most powerful phone possible, but you happen to live in a country that doesn't offer the Snapdragon, then you're still paying the exact same amount for a lesser chip. If that's you, you might feel a bit shortchanged. Obviously that doesn't happen with the iPhone. In the iPhone 13 Pro Max, no matter where you live, you get the A15 Bionic chip in it, which is just superb. So in the battle of performance, even though this doesn't trouble me at all, it works perfectly well, it's hard to look past how good iPhones continue to be when it comes to performance. They're just so quick. Although one thing the S22 Ultra does have over this is biometric security. So they both have facial recognition, there's Face ID on this, and there's Samsung's version of Face ID on here. But this also has a fingerprint sensor underneath the screen. And even though that might sound like a step back from Face ID, I find myself using that fingerprint sensor all the time. It's just convenient, it's always there, and having used Touch ID for many years, it feels very natural. And Samsung somehow manages to create a facial recognition system without needing a notch. Now I know the iPhone 14 this year is expected to get rid of the notch completely, and it is about time, really Apple. This, I just prefer biometric security on this phone. The screen on the S22 Ultra is the best smartphone screen I have ever used. It's a super sharp, super high density 1440p OLED panel, and it is absolutely wonderful. It also has something called Vision Boost, which makes it much more readable in direct sunlight, and I can confirm that works absolutely perfectly. It also has 1750 nits of peak brightness versus the iPhone 13 Pro Max's 1200, which is just bonkers. And if you combine that with Samsung's typical kind of vivid take on color management, it's just such a pleasing screen to look at. It also doesn't have any bezels on the left and right hand sides, which just gives you this lovely expansive display to work on. The only slight downside with that is that you get a bit of light fall off on either edge. So if you've got a, a, a web page or something that is very white, on the left and right hand side, you can see a bit of a darker edge. It's just a bit, a little bit jarring occasionally, but again, not really a deal breaker. And don't get me wrong, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a wonderful screen. iPhones have had great screens for a long period of time. But there's just something about the sharpness, the color, the brightness on this S22 Ultra screen that makes this one look a little bit dull. The only thing the S22 Ultra doesn't have compared to the iPhone is something like True Tone. And True Tone basically corrects the white balance on the screen on the iPhone to make it look more natural. If you put the two against each other, then this looks incredibly blue compared to this because of the lack of True Tone on here. So Samsung, all you need to do is add some kind of True Tone thing to your phones and you are winning. When it comes to the operating systems on these two phones, the iPhone 13 Pro Max obviously runs iOS 15. iOS is fantastic, it's incredibly stable, again, very, very quick. Apple have done a lot to it over the last few years. You know, they've added widgets, for example, to make the home screen a bit more interesting. They've also done lots of under the hood improvements. There's lots of convenience features built in. There's superb interoperability between your iPhone and your iPad and your Mac. You can very quickly transfer things between devices and you know, there's all sorts of things they've done to make it a wonderful ecosystem. But iOS is getting a bit boring. And you realize that when you start using Android phones like the S22 Ultra. Now, Samsung has a history of basically butchering Android. They used to throw their own skin on it and do all this stuff to it just to make it absolutely horrible. Now, I remember those Samsung phones of old. I'm happy to report that the new version of Android or Samsung Android, which is called One UI, is absolutely fantastic. It still looks a little bit different and Samsung still chucks all of their apps on there, which you can just delete straight away. But apart from that, yeah, it feels like Android and I really like the current version of Android. And also you can tweak the S22 Ultra more than the iPhone, almost too much to be fair, but a lot of the settings are hidden away unless you know where to look for them. So again, it doesn't really get in the way of the user experience. There are some annoyances. So for example, tap to wake on this phone seems to take a bit longer than it does on the iPhone. And actually that's probably it. I just find this a slightly more exciting phone to use than the iPhone. And again, that might be because I am an iPhone user. I've used the iPhone for years and years, and it might just be a honeymoon phase, who knows. But I do think Apple has got some work to do if they're gonna stop me from picking up this phone 
more than this phone. One of the biggest comparisons anyone's gonna make between these two phones is the camera performance. This gets really interesting. So I've done a bunch of test shots with these two phones, and firstly, I've not done anything to them. They are straight out of the camera, straight onto the screen in front of you. So, well, let's take a look. And I think if you look at that S22 shot, I think it's sharper. It's a bit noisier than the iPhone, but there's definitely more sharpness there, and I think my skin tones look a little bit more natural. Both cameras are also capable of macro photography, which is really useful and quite a lot of fun to use. And I think in this example, even though the S22 Ultra is, again, sharper than the iPhone, the iPhone does have less distortion in the corners of the image. I think this comparison also reveals a different white balance choice between the two phones. So the S22 Ultra is much warmer than the iPhone shot, whereas the iPhone has this kind of blue tint. Now, this photo of my dog, Eddie, I think is really revealing. Just look at that Samsung shot, it's so much brighter, it's done a much better job of dealing with the highlights and shadows, and again, it's much sharper than the iPhone's effort. The next shot really took me by surprise. Trust me, the S22 Ultra has got it bang on, that's the colour of that cabinet, and also, it's added a little bit of saturation to the colours that you can see on that cushion, but it's not too much, it's just enough to bring those colours out without it being too jarring. And once again, the iPhone has completely destroyed the white balance on this shot. Why it's made it so blue, I have absolutely no idea. Lastly, portrait mode, and there, again, there's no comparison here. I think the S22 Ultra has absolutely nailed it. It's not an easy subject, this, but it's completely got the edge detection right, there's just enough bokeh, you know, enough background blur. The iPhone, on the other hand, has really struggled with those edges. The bokeh is okay. The image itself, it just looks, it looks fake. Whereas the, I think the S22 Ultra, you can get away with that. So when it comes to photography, I think the S22 Ultra beats the iPhone 13 Pro Max into a cocked hat. Now when it comes to video, it's a very different story and the iPhone 13 Pro Max completely nails it. Now both pieces of footage were shot on 4K on both cameras and I think the iPhone is sharper. I think ironically, it has better white balance. I think the image stabilization on the S22 Ultra looks looks a bit unnatural. It's almost too gimbal-like. I also think the dynamic range on the iPhone is much better. I think the way that it deals with changes to outdoor and indoor lighting is just much smoother. In fact, it's barely noticeable. I just much prefer working with that footage from the iPhone. And yes, you can shoot in 8K on the S22 Ultra, but there's a massive crop factor with that. So it zooms into the image to shoot at 8K, which makes it annoying, but also who needs 8K on their phone? Now also the iPhone does shoot in ProRes, which is a much kind of more tweakable video format, but it makes massive file sizes, and because you can only use lightning to get the files off, it just takes forever to transfer the imagery, so again, I find that a bit pointless. And even though I don't do much video shooting with my phones these days, there's no doubting that the king in that area is still the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Very quickly on battery life, these are two stonking performers when it comes to battery. So the S22 Ultra is definitely a two day battery. You can probably get more out of it than that if you're a fairly conservative user, but I've consistently got two days out of this, no problem at all. But it's not the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now on Tuesday last week, I charged this up to 100% and it left the charger at 5 a.m. that day. Now if you fast forward from 5 a.m. that Tuesday to 11.20 a.m. on the Thursday, this still had 23% battery life left. That is nuts. I didn't charge it once in between that time. So the battery life in both these phones is fantastic, but the battery life in the iPhone 13 Pro Max, if you can deal with the bigger size and the weight of this thing, it changes your relationship with your smartphone completely. Now I've left any mention of the S Pen in the S22 Ultra until the conclusion of this review because it feels a little bit gimmicky to me. And that's a shame because one of the biggest things I always admired about the Note range was that S Pen. You know, looking at it from afar, I thought it'd be lovely to have a phone where you can just whip this thing out and make some quick notes. Occasionally I'll use it to annotate an image or something or literally make a very quick note. but. I don't know, I don't quite like the way that you have to make notes like this. You know, holding it in one hand and doing it like this, for me, because my handwriting's terrible, it just results in awful looking notes. You can do some of the cool things with it. For example, you can use it as a shutter release for the camera. So if you wanna put your camera on a corner somewhere, you can use this to take the photo without you know, doing a timer and all that sort of stuff. I just get the feeling that this is gonna stay in here longer than I thought it might. Uh, so really, it's not a point of differentiation for me between these two phones. The iPhone 13 Pro Max doesn't have stylus support. I don't think Apple are ever gonna do that. But now that I have both of these phones, 
it doesn't feel like a miss as far as Apple is concerned. So choosing between these phones is quite straightforward, actually. If you are an Apple ecosystem person, so if you love all of the interoperability between their different devices and things like handoff and all that stuff, then just get the iPhone. Because if you go from an iPhone to a Samsung phone, you will get fed up with this because it won't work with your Mac quite as nicely. It doesn't have things like handoff, for example. And there's certain apps that you probably use on your iPhone, your Macs, etc., that won't be compatible with Samsung. If you're not kind of nestled within Apple's walled garden and their ecosystem, then I think the Samsung S22 Ultra is a better phone. It's on a par with the iPhone when it comes to design and materials. The screen is much better, in my opinion. Camera is objective better. Battery life is still fantastic. And even though the S22 Ultra looks more expensive on paper, Samsung is far more generous when it comes to their trade-in values, but also the things like Disney Plus and the free Galaxy Buds Pro. So Samsung, you do have some work to do. I think the chip situation needs to be sorted out. I think this needs true tone. I think the video performance needs to be made just as good as the iPhone. But you are fast becoming my favorite smartphone manufacturer. Now, if you're still unconvinced about the S22 Ultra and you want to get some more thoughts from me on this phone, keep watching for my full review. But until next time, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you next time.